Hey everyone, it is Adrian here, and it is such a great privilege to be able to share God's Word with you today. And aren't you just loving this Be Happy Attitude series? And if you are first, it's your first time connecting with Lifehouse, I want to say welcome to church. It's so great that you are connecting with us, whether you're online or you're at a watch party, wherever you're connecting with us, welcome to church. We're so glad that you are connecting with us. And we're in this series called the Be Happy Attitudes. And we're looking at an incredible teaching from Jesus that's found in Matthew chapter 5. And one of the key words that Jesus uses in the beginning of this teaching is this word blessed. And that's what we've been looking at, these different statements that Jesus says, blessed are, blah, 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 blessed are. And this word blessed is from the original Greek word makarios. And it's such a great word, and it's a word that we're loving as a church. I'm seeing it all over social media, people using the word makarios. Um, it's just such a great and rich word. And this word makarios is a word that would have been uh, understood and uh, um, the crowd that Jesus was preaching to that day would have been aware of this word, would be familiar with this word, because it was a word that was used to describe the, the rich and the famous and the elite in society, those that were above life's problems. The ancient Greeks used to use this word to describe the Greek gods who lounged around on Mount Olympus far above the struggles of the everyday man. And so, the people on, in this crowd were familiar with this word makarios, but many of them knew of the word, but for them it was out of reach. It was not something that they were uh, able to attain in their life. It's kind of like today, all these billionaires talking about uh, space travel and uh, living on Mars, and we're all aware of these conversations, but for all of us, we're like, Ah, oh, that's not a reality for me. I'm not planning my next trip to Mars. Um, I know of the concept, but uh, it's not ever going to be a reality for me. And I think it's the same for this word makarios. It had been elevated to this place of this unreachable uh, place of privilege that only the elite in the world would experience. And and so this word makarios is not just a ha 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 happy moment, but it's a life of of privilege, of blessing, of abundance, of fullness. And the crowd that Jesus, Jesus was preaching to that day was not made up of the rich and famous. There were no Zeus and the Greek gods were not chilling in the crowd there. It was the everyday person, the hard working person, the, the accountant, the, uh, the school teacher, the, the nurse, the the person who works in the convenience store, they were all there in the crowd. The, those that were depressed and, and had struggles in life, those that had lost loved ones and were grieving, those that um, had high hopes and dreams but yet didn't have the resources to accomplish great things in their life. And so this was a diverse crowd of people and this message that Jesus shares flips it around sharing that this makarios, this blessed life was not just reserved for the rich and the famous, but it was a, you were able to supernaturally step into this makarios life when you embrace these attitudes, this Jesus way of thinking, which is just absolutely incredible. And the, the makarios, the blessing I want to look at today is in Matthew chapter 5. Jesus says, Blessed are the pure at heart, for they will see God. Um, and so what Jesus is saying is that those that have a pure heart, those that are, have a, a, a single-hearted desire to seek God and know God, will see God and experience the supernatural makarios life. And now the word pure that Jesus uses here is not someone who's living a perfect life. Because often we think of the word pure, we think of someone who is making no mistakes and is absolutely perfect in everything they do. And there's only one person that ever did that, and that was Jesus. So this word pure, um, as Jesus' brother describes it, is a heart that is not divided. A pure heart is a heart with a single focus and a desire to seek God and seek God alone. We read what Jesus' brother James writes in James chapter 4, verse 8. He says, come close to God. There's that invitation again. And God will come close to you. You're going to see God. You're going to experience God. Wash your hands, you sinners. Purify your hearts, 
4, your loyalty is divided between God and the world. And so what James is instructing and helping us to see that a, a pure heart is an undivided heart. It's a heart that says, God, I want to, I want to know you. God, I'm seeking after you. God, I, I want just what you have, God. It's not, I want a bit of the world. What does the world have to offer me? I'm going to seek what the world has to offer, the world's pleasures and wisdom. And I'm going to seek that, but I'm also going to seek a bit of what God has. And that's a Undivided, that's a divided heart and that's an unpure heart, but an impure heart. But a pure heart is a heart that is undivided, that has a desire to know God. And even if you've messed up, even if you've made many mistakes in your life and you've done terrible things, you can still have a pure heart because a pure heart is not based on your what you've done in life, but it's a based on your desire to know God and this willingness to seek Him and seek Him alone. And that's what Jesus is inviting this crowd into, which is a refreshing message. Because the religious message of that day was, do this, do that. You have to follow all these rules. Boom, 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 boom. If you follow all of these rules, if you do all of these things, you will see God. You will be in God's good books. And that's what the religious teachers were teaching in those days, uh, especially amongst the Jewish people. But Jesus flips it around. He says it's not about following a bunch of rules. It's about having this desire to know God. If you have a desire to know God and you seek after Him, you will find Him and you will experience this Makarios life. And this would have been refreshing to that crowd because they had been sitting under this religious teaching that none of them could live up to. This burden of of rules and regulations that they were living under. But Jesus brings this refreshing life that says, if you have a pure desire to know God and you seek Him, you will find Him and experience the Makarios life. And I want to share a story of an incredible guy. I love this story. It's the story of this guy called Nathaniel. And we find the story in John chapter 1. And, and we meet Nathaniel. He's a pure-hearted guy. He's, he's not perfect in any ways. He's not perfect, but he's a, he's a seeker. He desires to know God. We, we, we meet him. We see different parts of his personality. We, we learn that he's a seeker. And because he's a seeker, he, he, he has this pure heart and he encounters Jesus and his life is changed in the most incredible way. So let's look at John chapter 1 verse 43. This is where we meet this guy. The next day, Jesus decided to go to the region of Galilee. There he found Philip and he said to him, come and follow me. Now Philip, Andrew and Peter were all from the same village of Bethsaida. Then Philip went to look for his friend Nathaniel and told him, we have found him. We've found the one we've been waiting for. It's Jesus, son of Joseph from Nazareth, the anointed one. He's the one that Moses the prophet, and the prophets have prophesied would come. Nathaniel sneered, Nazareth? What good thing could ever come from Nazareth? Philip answered, come and let's find out. So we, we meet this guy, Nathaniel, and he seems like... The first thing we realize about this guy, he, he wears his heart on his sleeve. He's not scared to say it as it is. He doesn't think anything good can come from, uh, from Nazareth, and, he, and he's happy to tell the world this. And so we, we realize that he's just a pure-hearted guy. He wears his heart on the sleeve, but we also realize that he's a seeker. And we understand he's a seeker because Philip comes to him and he says, We have found him. We found the one we've been waiting for. And so obviously Philip and Nathaniel were part of a group of people that were searching, that were seeking to find this Messiah, to, to, to find that the one that for thousands of years the prophets had been speaking about this Messiah. Moses had spoken about him. Isaiah, Jeremiah, all of these prophets had spoken about this one, this Messiah, the Son of God that would come. And so Nathaniel had obviously been a man that was reading the scriptures. He had read what Moses wrote. He read what Isaiah, Jeremiah, Ezekiel, and all the prophets had read and written about this Messiah. So he was obviously a man that had spent time seeking. Him and Philip had obviously had times where they had had discussions and said, well, I read this today and it says this and I read that. And they were seekers. They were men with a heart after God, seeking to know God. And Philip had an encounter with Jesus and he realizes that Jesus 
is the one. He is the Messiah. He is truth. He is the one that these prophets had been speaking of for thousands of years. And he comes to Nathaniel and he says to him, I think I found him. I found the one we've been searching for. And Nathaniel, he's a seeker. He has a desire, but he's also, he has doubts. He's got questions. And I love this about Nathaniel. He says, like, what good thing can come from Nazareth? So in his mind, as a seeker, he's, he's looking at all these truths and he thinks to himself, this all of these things that we see can't surely come from Nazareth. It can't come from a guy from Nazareth. And, and I think this is so helpful for all of us as seekers, uh, because you may be a seeker. If you're connecting with us and you may have not made a decision yet to follow Jesus, you're still exploring these things and you have questions, you have doubts. That's okay. We see this guy had doubts. He had questions. Um, if I still have questions, even though I'm a believer in Jesus, I believe that Jesus is the only way to God. I'm, I'm a follower of Jesus, but I still have questions. I, I have doubts and I, I have things that I wrestle through. And, and this is part of the journey of being a seeker. This is, you can have a pure heart and still have doubts. You can still have questions and have a pure heart. And so I want to encourage you, if you have questions, if you have your doubts, it's okay. Just keep on coming closer. Keep on reading the Bible. Keep on exploring more about Jesus because this is what Nathaniel does. And I, I love that about, I love Philip, his response. I think Philip is such an incredible friend. I want to be a friend like Philip. And I, um, and I want to encourage us. Let us be friends like Philip who, who, who come to, our, who tell our friends, who say, hey guys, I, I found the one and this is Jesus and this is what he's done in our life. And, we, we, and I want to encourage you, get good at sharing your story. Learn to tell your story well. Learn to tell your story in, in less than three minutes. Tell your story about what Jesus has done for you. Share it with your friends. Share it with your neighbors. Share it with your family. Share with everyone in your world what Jesus has done for you and even if they have questions and doubts and push back that's okay you don't need to have all the answers all you need to do is have an invitation and say come and seek with me come and seek with me and and as somebody wants to learn let's be just like Philip and say to Nathaniel come come and let's find out and we we are a people of invitation and if you are a seeker today if you have doubts, I want to invite you and say, come, come and come and come closer. Come and learn more about Jesus because he is amazing. He is amazing. And this is exactly what um, this is exactly what Nathaniel does. He he even though he's got doubts, even though he's got questions about this dude from Nazareth, because he's a seeker, he's like, OK, I'm going to come with you, Philip. And uh, I love it. So verse 47, when Jesus saw Nathanael approaching, he said, Yeah, comes a true son of Israel, an honest man with no hidden motive. So Jesus acknowledges this is a good dude. This is a seeker. And then verse 30, 48, Nathanael was stunned and said, But you've never met me. How do you know anything about me? Jesus answered, Nathanael, right before Philip came to you, I saw you sitting under the shade of a fig tree. Nathaniel blurted out, Teacher, you truly are the Son of God, the King of Israel. And this is a powerful moment for Nathaniel. And, and um, I don't know about you, but my, I'm thinking like, what was it about that Jesus said to him? What was it? Because he goes from saying, can anything good come from Nazareth? To saying, you're the Messiah, you're the Son of God. You're this great teacher. You're the one that we've been waiting for. What is it about Jesus' response to Nathaniel that changes him? And I, I do believe it's a supernatural touch from God. And that's what Jesus does when he speaks. His words carry power and authority and they touch our lives. But I think it's this idea that Jesus says, I saw you, Nathaniel. I saw you. And under the fig tree and, and, and Nathaniel had been sitting under the shade of a fig tree just before Philip came to him. So Philip was obviously looking for Nathaniel. Where is this guy? I have to tell him what I've seen. And, he, and he's going and he finds Nathaniel sitting under the shade of a fig tree. And this is significant because fig trees were they, these beautiful trees that provided great shade. 
And it was a place that people would go and rest. It was a place that people would go find a place of solitude by themselves. It was a place where they could rest. People would read scriptures there. They would meditate. They would pray. They would seek God. They would talk to God. This was a place where people would go and seek God. And I really believe that that that's what Nathaniel was doing. I, I honestly believe that Nathaniel was seeking God. He was maybe even reading the scriptures under that fig tree. And he knew that nobody could see him. And so the fact that Jesus says to him, Nathaniel, I see you. I see you. I recognize you. I saw you sitting on that fig tree. I've, I've, I see you that you are seeking. I see that you have questions. I see that you have doubts. But I see you, Nathaniel. And I love this truth about God, that he, He's a God that sees what we do in the secret place. He sees the place. He, he sees that he, he, he recognizes the moments that you are in your bedroom alone or you're on a walk and you, you're wrestling through things and you're talking to God and you have questions um, and you are not alone. And it reminds me of a great teaching from Jesus in Matthew chapter 6. He says, when you pray, don't be like the hypocrites who love to pray publicly on street corners and in the synagogues where everyone can see them I tell you the truth, there, that is all the reward that will, you, they will get. But when you pray, go away by yourself, shut the door behind you and pray to your father in private. Then your father who sees everything will reward you. So God is a father who loves to reward those that seek him in private. It's not about being recognized as someone spiritual by anybody else, but it's those that have a true desire to know God and seek him in the secret place. And I believe this is what Nathaniel was doing. And when Jesus says, I saw you, Nathaniel, it opens up his heart and he experiences Jesus in an incredible way. And I, wanna, I, I, I wonder, have you ever asked the question, does anyone see me? Do, 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 do you even see me, God? Do you even see the questions that I have? Do you even see the struggles that I'm going through? And I want to encourage you with this today, that God sees you. Jesus saw Nathaniel. Jesus saw him with his questions. Jesus saw him under that fig tree. And Jesus sees you in the struggles that you are going through. He's not a God that's disconnected from your life, but a God that sees you. And as a seeker, I want to encourage you to continue to seek him with all of your heart. Um, and this, it's this truth that changed my life. It's this truth that radically changed my life when I realized that God sees me and knows me. I grew up in a great Christian home, an amazing family. I went to church. I learned to read the Bible. I learned to pray all of these amazing things. And I'm so grateful that I had these experiences because it gave me a great foundation. But I didn't have a real vibrant relationship with Jesus was to, uh, at the age of 17 that a friend invited me to church. Um, I was, he invited me to his church and um, the preacher was preaching and afterwards he got everyone to stand and he was praying for everyone. And at the end of his prayer, he paused and he opened up his eyes and he looked straight at me at the back and he pointed to me and he said to me, young man, God wants to let you know today that he loves you and he has a great plan and purpose for your life. And in that moment, it was as if God's love just washed over me, His power and, and just this reality that God loves me and He knows me and He has a plan and purpose for my life. This fact that God sees me just changed my life. I just started weeping as I was uncontrollably in because I was happy because I was overwhelmed with God's love. And it was a moment in my life that changed me forever. And I want to let you know today that God sees you. He loves you and he has a great plan and a purpose for your life. And so let's jump back to our, our, our boy Nathaniel. Remember, he blurts out, he says, teacher, you truly are the son of God, the king of Israel. And Jesus comes back with, to him with an incredible promise says Jesus answered him do you believe simply because I told you I saw you sitting under a fig tree you will experience even more impressive things than that I prophesy to you an eternal truth from now on you will see the heaven open and gaze upon the son of man like a stairway reaching to the sky with the messengers of God climbing up and down upon him what an incredible promise and I know there's a lot of angels and open heavens and stairways and 
all of those things, which may be a little bit confusing, but simply put, Jesus says to Nathaniel, now that you have believed and you've experienced me, you are in this place of makarios, you're in this place of blessing, a place of privilege that you are now a son of God, a child of God, and you are going to see greater things. You're going to see the open heavens above your life and experience God like you've never experienced before. And this is the promise. This is the invitation for blessed are the pure at heart. Blessed are the seekers that seek after God because you will see God and you will see Him do incredible things. And I want to end with this today is that um, we are all seekers. Um, I want to encourage you to be a seeker. Whether it, but maybe you have not made a decision yet to follow Jesus, I want to invite you to come to continue to seek Him. But even if you are a follower of Jesus today, we need to continue to be seekers. We want to continue to seek first the kingdom of God. We want to continue to seek Jesus because we are first and foremost followers of Jesus. That's who we are. And in order to be a follower, we need to keep following Jesus. We need to keep seeking Him, seeking His heart, seeking to know Jesus, seeking to understand who He's created us to be and seeking His will in every situation. So in order to be a seeker, I want to encourage you to find your fig tree. Nathaniel had this place. He had a fig tree. He had a place that he could go, that he could seek God, where he could pray, he could meditate, he could read the scriptures, he could talk to God and wrestle through things by himself. Um, I believe that uh, our Christian walk needs to be lived out in community. I love connect groups. I love dream teams. I love our public gatherings and online services. These are great, um, a big part of our walk with Jesus. But there is also something so powerful about having, uh, finding your fig tree, finding a place and a way that you can continue to seek God. And when I talk about finding your fig tree, I'm not talking as much, I'm not talking about a physical space. Um, even though it's great to find a physical space that's quiet, free from distractions, but I'm talking about uh, continuous, consistent practices. Continuous, consistent practices that will help you on a journey of seeking to know Jesus, seeking to understand His will. And a practice is not something you do to impress God. It's not like, well, I'm doing this today to get brownie points with God. No, a practice is something that you do because you desire to know God. You desire to follow Him and walk with Him. So I want to encourage you with two practices today that you, every one of us who are seekers can continue to do. Number one is journaling. We love journaling here at Lifehouse Church. And journaling is simply uh, writing down personal applications about, from God's Word. What is God speaking to you? And so I want to encourage you to take five to ten minutes every day. You can do more if you want, but if you, if you can only do five to ten minutes a day, that's awesome. That is great. And so take five to ten minutes every day and read a passage of Scripture. And when so write down on, on your phone or in a book and write down the date and write down the scripture that you're reading. And then once you've read it, you can read it once or twice and write down a few things. What do you observe? Like as you read it, what stands out to you? What do you recognize about this? And once you've written down all the things that you, you've observed, what out of those things that you've observed, what stands out to you the most? What is the, the thing that impacts your heart the most out of all of those things you've written? And write that down. And that is what God is wanting to encourage you with that day. God loves to speak. He's a God that speaks and wants to encourage us every day through His Word and guide us and teach us. And so do this every day for five to ten minutes every day. And so that's simply journaling. If you want to find out more about journaling, download our Lifehouse International app, uh, church app, and you go on, to, as you open it, it says Blue Book, click on Blue Book, and there's a little section that says how to journal, will teach you more. There's also my first month of journaling, which has 31 scriptures that you can start with and a reading plan through the book of Mark. So I want to encourage us as seekers, let's get on a journey of seeking God through journaling. And the second thing, second practice that we can do is simple prayer. And simple prayer is this, is that you can talk to God anywhere, anytime about anything. So if whatever, if something comes into your head and you have questions or you want to talk to God about it, talk to God and just use a normal voice uh, as you talk to God. So let's be those who are talking to God and based on what you read in your journaling, pray about that, talk to God about that. 
And these are two simple things that we can do every day. And so I want to encourage us. Let us find our fig tree. Let us be like Nathaniel. Has a, have, have these practices in our life where we we doing these on a daily basis because we have a desire with a pure heart to seek Jesus, to know Him and Him only. So I want to finish with this great scripture, Jeremiah 29, 11. We love it. And 12 and 13. It says, For God knows the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you a hope and a future. Then you will call on me and come and pray to me, and I will listen to you, and you will seek me and find me when you seek me with all of your heart. <laughs> I love that. God has a great plan and a purpose for your life, and He's inviting you to come and seek Him. Come, let's be a, a community of people that seek God with all of our heart. We, we don't want a divided heart we don't want the, what the world has to offer because the world has nothing to offer us compared to what Jesus has he has an abundant makarios life and let's be a church a community that continues to seek after God with all of our hearts and so I'd love to pray for you today if you want to just refresh that commitment to being a seeker after Jesus I want to pray for you right now so let's let's pray together Jesus thank you for your incredible sons and daughters chosen to to be your people and I ask that you empower us Jesus to continue to seek you God as we journal would you speak to us as your sons and daughters would you teach us about you and reveal to us about your plan and uh, I pray for every person that's wrestling through doubts and has questions God that you Holy Spirit would teach them and encourage them and help them on this journey as they seek after you in Jesus name Amen awesome I want to pray for one more group of people. Uh, you may be a seeker yet today and you've never made a decision to follow Jesus or maybe you did once upon a time but have drifted away and you want to come back to following Him. And I want to let you know that God loves you. He's got a great plan and purpose for your life and He died for you. Jesus died on the cross for you. And He did this because you and I, we've messed up. We've made many mistakes in our life and that's called sin. And sin deserves a penalty which is death. And so Jesus took that death upon himself so that he could offer you and me forgiveness and life. And so if you want to make a decision today to follow Jesus, I'm going to count to three. And then I want you to just say yes in your heart. And I'd love to pray for you. So one, two, three. If that's you today. I would love to pray for you. God, thank you for these incredible men and women. Uh, thank you that they've made a decision to follow you. Would you uh, encourage them? Would you strengthen them? Would you teach them? Would you empower them? We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen, amen. Come on, let's just celebrate together. Well, thank you so much for connecting with us. I hope that you enjoyed it. Let's continue to be seekers of Jesus and seek Him with all of our hearts. Hope you have a great rest of your week.